Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn how to verify the spanning tree protocol. I'm using the same network topology that I've been using throughout the rest of the section. So we've got the layer three part of the network up at the top with our routers R1 and R2 and going northbound. And then we've got the layer two part of the network with our core distribution switches, CD1 and CD2, and our access layer switches, access three and access four. There's obviously layer three connections going from the PCs up to the routers as their default gateways as well. So what we want to do here is to map out how the spanning tree has been configured. In this example, the switches have been configured with VLANs, but spanning tree has not been configured at all. So they're all going to be using the default priority. So what we want to do here is to determine which is the root bridge first. Then from there, we can figure out our root ports on the other switches, our designated ports and our blocking ports so that we can check that spanning tree has eliminated any loops in the layer two part of the network. And we can also see the tree that traffic is going to be traveling over. Now, the diagram here is a screenshot from Packet Tracer and I've got the link lights enabled so you can actually see easily where the root bridge is and the path that traffic is going to go over. Just from looking at it here, you see that both Axis 3 and CD2, their links are all green. So one of those two is going to be the root bridge. And on CD1, it's blocking a port going towards CD2. So CD2 can't be the root bridge. It's going to be access free. I can see on access free, all the links going to it are green on both sides. I can also see from the diagram that the ports that are being blocked are gig O slash two on CD1 and port fast zero slash 21 on access four. So both of the possible loops going from CD1 to CD2 to access three, that has been broken by blocking gig O2 on CD1. And the potential loop between CD1, CD2 and access four has been broken by blocking the port fast zero slash 21 on access four. Okay, so I can see all that from the diagram, but Obviously, in the real world, you're not going to have a diagram which shows you exactly how spanning tree is configured. So how do we figure out how the spanning tree is laid out in a production network? That's what we're going to cover here using the same example topology. So really the Swiss Army knife command for checking your spanning tree configuration is show spanning tree. You already know that the default spanning tree version on a Cisco switch is PVST plus, which runs a separate spanning tree instance for every VLAN. So you also need to specify the VLAN as well. In the example here, we're running the command first off on the root bridge, which was on access three for our example. So I say show spanning tree VLAN one. So you have to, well, if you don't specify the VLAN, it will show you the spanning tree for all of your different VLANs. And if you've got a lot of VLANs on the switch, it's gonna be very long output. So you want to specify the particular VLAN. The next thing you can see here is that the protocol is IEEE. And it's not actually using one of the standard IEEE spanning tree versions. It's using Cisco's proprietary PVST+. It's just a quirk of the history of how this was developed that Cisco called PVST IEEE when you use the show spanning tree command. So using the default PVST plus here. Next thing to tell you about the output of the command, there's two sections. 
the root ID section and the bridge ID section. The root ID gives you information about the root bridge. The bridge ID section gives you information about this switch. So the root ID information should be similar on all of the switches in your local area network. The bridge ID section will specify the MAC address for that individual switch. Next thing, we're on the root bridge here, we can see that very clearly. Under the root ID section, it tells us this bridge is the root. And that's why the MAC address is the same in the root ID section and in the bridge ID section, because this switch is the root bridge. And notice that for this example, the switch's MAC address ends in D43D. That's important when we look at the information coming up on the next switch we'll look at, which is a non-root bridge. So D43D. We can see the priority in here. The priority is 32768, which is the default priority. This has been elected as the root bridge, so I can see very simply from this information that all my bridges, all my switches must be set with the default priority, which is 32768. And that this switch was elected as the root bridge because it's got the lowest MAC address. The last thing to see on the output of the command is it gives you the status of all your interfaces that are connected to other switches. Because this is the root bridge, all our ports are going to be designated ports and forwarding. Okay, next let's look at the output on a non-root bridge. So that was on axis 3. Next up we'll look at the output on CD1. And from the diagram we can see that it is forwarding on interfaces fast 024 and 0 slash 21. And it's blocking on interface gig 0 slash 2. So looking at the output on CD1, I do a show spanning tree for VLAN 1 again. I can see that this switch is also running PVST+. You want all the switches in your network to be running the same spanning tree version. Again, we've got the root ID and the bridge ID section. And because this is not the root bridge, the two MAC addresses are different now. Again, the root ID section gives you information about the root bridge. You want all of the switches in your network for the same VLAN to be agreeing on which, which switch this is. And we can see that it is the same D43D, so that looks good. In the bridge ID section, I can see that this switch's unique MAC address ends in 3902. This switch's MAC address starts with 0090, which is higher than the root bridge's MAC address of 0001. That's why the root bridge was preferred over this one. Other information in the root ID section, I can see that this switch's cost to get to the root bridge is 19, and the root port is interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 24. That's the least cost path interface to get to the root bridge. And down at the bottom, I can see the interface gig 0 slash 2, its role is alternate, so it is a blocking port. It's the port that has been selected to block a potential loop. Interfaces fast 0 slash 21 and 0 slash 24 are designated in a root port and they are both forwarding. Okay, so that was CD1. If we look at the topology diagram again, let's also have a look at CD2. And on CD2, all its interfaces should be forwarding. So let's jump into the lab to see this. I will go to my enable prompt and show spanning tree for VLAN 1. And in here, I can see that it agrees that the root bridge is access free, ending with MAC address D43D. This switch's MAC address also begins with 0090, so it's a higher MAC. That's why it was not selected as the root bridge. All of my switches are running the default priority of 32768. For this switch to get out to the root bridge, it uses interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 21, and the cost is 19. I can see all of my ports that are connected to other switches down at the bottom here 
and fast zero slash 21 again is the root part the other two parts are designated parts so all of these parts are forwarding finally let's look at the topology diagram again the last switch to look at is access 4 which is forwarding on fast 0 slash 24 that is the root part and it's blocking on fast 0 slash 21 so let's jump on to axis 4 in the lab show spanning tree for vlan 1 i can see it also agrees that the root bridge is access 3 this switch's MAC address begins with 0060, which is higher than the root bridge's MAC address. All of my switches are using a priority A32768. The root part is fast 0 slash 24, and the cost to get to the root bridge is 38. We're forwarding on port fast 0 slash 24, and we're blocking on port fast 0 slash 21. So that's how you can check your spanning tree topology there's not really a quick way of doing this if you just have command line access to your switches jump onto one of your switches and do show spanning tree there that will tell you which is the root bridge to find the entire topology and to see which blocks are which parts are forwarding and which are blocking you really just have to map it out switch by switch so it's handy if you use a pencil on paper for this you can draw it down and diagram everything okay so that was the show spanning tree command thanks for watching if you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now then you can enroll in my ccna gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description it also includes full study notes quizzes and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else